All right, what you see here is the Poco X3 Pro running the latest version of Evolution X. Probably the best custom ROM which can compete with Dubfest, which I feel is one of the best ROMs available for this device. Now I've been using this for more than two weeks now and I'm not using a Pixel 7 or any other flagship device as my primary. You would be surprised to know that in 2023, I'm using the Poco X3 Pro as a primary device with this custom ROM called Evolution X for more than 15 days now so that I can give you guys an accurate review of this custom ROM and you can decide should you flash it or not. Hello everyone, my name is Kailash and you're watching Phone Ops. We make amazing content like this every single day, so please subscribe and share it with your friends. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops, let's get going. Now let's begin with the particulars of this ROM, starting with the change log. Now as you can see over here, this is Evolution X released on the 30th of June 2023. This is of course based on Android 13 QPR3 and it comes with a June security patch. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a July security patch. And for the month of July, we are yet to see an update. And looking at the timeline, I think by the end of July, they might give us an update. And I am looking forward to that because this is an excellent ROM that I've been using since a long time. So it does come with Android June security patch, rebase on Android 13 QPR3 as I mentioned, update fingerprints to June 2023. Now as far as device change log is concerned, Leica camera version 4.7 has been included in this update which is a good thing. Kernel has been upstreamed to the latest version available and there are some other changes and improvement. Now good things to note over here that it comes with Google Apps pre-built, that is a good thing. SE Linux status is enforcing and safety net passes by default, which means your security is taken care of. You will be able to use banking applications. Matter of fact, I tried Netflix and Amazon Prime HD as well, as far as Wide and L1 is concerned, and I did not have any problems. So let's get going with the ROM first. You know, let's talk about the main screen, the home screen. When you look at it, the moment you boot into this ROM, you are greeted with a very, very pleasant experience because you get a lot of themed icons over here. They have worked really hard to make each and every icon themed out there, be it in the app drawer on the home screen. Well, that shows, but there is a small downside to that and we will talk about that. First, let's actually have a look what we get over here. You get your standard uh, Google stuff over here, like, you know, the calendar, the weather, it's everything Googly because this is mostly inspired by the AOSP system or pure Android, if you would. To the left, of course, you have Google Feed, which on this Poco X3 Pro with this custom ROM runs really, really smooth, which is very, very nice. Because if you compare it with MIUI, sometimes there are small stutters and jitters, which you would not see here. It works absolutely flawless and I really appreciate that. Now, apart from this, if you long press on the home screen, you are greeted with this particular menu called Evo X Launcher Settings. Now, if you talk about stock ROMs, it comes with MIUI Launcher Settings, which doesn't give you such comprehensive customization. If you talk about Pixel Experience, which is, you know, as good as it gets, as far as pure Android is concerned, you get pixel launcher settings, but again, you don't get so many customization options. And the amount of options that are available, they are so extensive that you're gonna have to try it yourself. If you look over here, you have customizations for your icons. The first instance of force themed icons over here, Next up, you have home screen customization. As you can see, you can customize a ton of options over here. And then if we talk about app drawer, you have app drawer customization as well. And you do have themed icons mentioned over here too. Now, recents can be customized as well with a few options which are available at your disposal. At the same time, you have suggestions which I mostly keep disabled, but if you are someone who would like to use them, you're welcome to use them. Last but not the least, you do have miscellaneous settings. So there are some miscellaneous settings related to the launcher that you can utilize. And you do get a built-in option to restart the launcher. So every time you make changes to the customization options, you can actually go ahead and restart the launcher so that it can go ahead and take effect. Now, once again, moving on to the home screen, you would wonder what is there at the top, right? Because the quick tiles, the status bar is where customization of custom ROMs is present. And trust me, Evolution X doesn't disappoint there too. Now, the moment you swipe from the top to bottom, you would notice that these quick tiles look different. The brightness slider looks different. The reason being, I have customized it based on Evolution X customization options, and that makes you stand out from what you would usually get. It's either the MIUI look or the pure pixel look on USB ROMs, right? 
So these customizations are more welcome. But what's more interesting is if you go to the edit menu, you will find a heap of customization tiles available over here. There are so many options and trust me, I've not used more than 60% of these because there are just so many of them and I need not use all of them, right? So all these options, you can have a look at them. If you want to use any of these, they are available in this custom ROM. At the same time, these uh, you know icons in the status bar are clickable. That means uh, if you click on your network indicator, or the clock you will be taken to the respective app which is a good touch i believe and at the bottom of the quick tiles or the status bar over here you can see that what apps are active is displayed in typical android 13 style you can use you know have this device with different users that's as you can see i've tried that and it works well no problems there at the same time you have a shortcut for settings but when you go to the power menu, you would notice that the advanced power menu for Evolution X is doing a brilliant job as well. So in my opinion, that is a good touch. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of options available over here. And yeah, that makes your life easy, especially when, when you want to boot into recovery or when you want to go to fast boot, it makes things much, much easy. But that's everything about the front end. Let's actually have a look at the app drawer of this particular ROM. So the moment you swipe up for the list of applications that I installed on your device, I'm sorry, I have quite a few because this is my personal device, as I said. What's interesting here is almost all the app icons are themed, which is a good thing in my opinion. This is how Google should have implemented this from day one, especially when they have the complete control. But nonetheless, Evolution X team has done that for us. Now, you might start to see why Google might have not done it because when you color all the icons in a similar color, all icons look similar and it becomes a little difficult for you to identify which app are you looking for. Probably that is the reason Google didn't go ahead and colorize all the icons and they are still holding back to that. I really don't know what their reason is, but this seems like a fair reason, right? Now you have a search bar at the top over here and you have your Google Lens shortcut available over here. You can go ahead and use it. At the same time, the same uh, Google search bar with the Google Lens is available at the bottom. You also have this, uh, you know, option where you can identify a song now playing which was introduced back in the day with previous pixel devices it is still present and it works absolutely fine now it's time to dive into settings and see what all options are available for customization of this wonderful long later we can definitely talk about you know benchmarks and gaming performance now in the settings menu you would get a search bar at the top you would get your you know user info that is available and you have something called as the evolver now under the evolver you can customize a lot of theming options so so if you go to status bar, as you can see, you do have your status bar customization options and there are quite a lot of them. Moving on, if you actually go to notifications, you would see that you have notification customization, you have your quick setting customization, which is pretty comprehensive. At the same time, you have your power menu customization. Remember the power menu that you saw? I had gone ahead and customized it and that is the reason it looks like this, right? Now moving on, if you talk about gestures, you do have a lot of gesture-based customization. You have lock screen, ambient music ticker, fingerprint authentication, vibration, every single small thing can be customized. And that, in my opinion, is a brilliant thing. Now you can customize gestures, you can customize your buttons if you're using navbar for that matter. But what is interesting is you have parallel space available over here. So that, in my opinion, is a good thing. If you don't have any dual apps, you can use parallel space to do that. And you have a game space as well. Now for gamers, this is very, very interesting. In the battery section, you do have this option of thermal profile, so that is present. But over here, you can have an option for in-game call. You can decide what type of notification you want when you're gaming. You can decide what to do with the ringer the moment your game mode is activated. You can block a full screen event. You can stay awake, lock gesture, disable auto brightness. At the same time, USB debugging can be disabled because games like New State can be really, really picky. If your debugging is enabled, they will not work, right? Now you can select the opacity. You can select what apps you want in game mode and things would work just fine. For me, it was BGMI and Call of Duty Mobile. I tried them with the game mode and without the game mode i didn't notice much of a difference as far as you know performance is concerned or fps is concerned but overall it was a pretty decent experience now that brings me to the next point that is gaming now, as i said i've tried call of duty mobile and bgmi both of them in the 60 fps mode i did not try them in say 90 or 120 fps respectively but in 60 fps for more than one hour of gaming i did not lose much battery there was no extreme overheating i did not have ghost touch so overall the gaming experience
experience was pretty good. Something that I did not try in 2023 on this device is gaming and recording because I still th think that, you know, that is a stretch. This is a device that has had issues with, you know, the chip and the device is going dead. And so I do not recommend you pushing it to the limits, but yeah, just get your casual gaming done. Just get your daily stuff done and you should be just fine. Now, talking about the camera situation before we actually get to another section, the camera situation is pretty interesting. The reason I say interesting is because you can click pretty good pictures from this camera. You should not have any major issues. But what happens is when you are in a third party application which requires you to use the camera to capture some pictures, well, you will have problems because it will click the picture, but it will not move ahead. So that is a big drawback. But apart from that, the camera application in terms of videos and photos does a pretty standard Pogo X3 Pro job. So no problems there. Now let's talk about the important part that is the battery section, right? Now, if we we'll see over here, I've been using Echo battery since the day I flashed this ROM. And if you go to history here, show 51 sessions, you would notice that I have indeed used extensively this custom ROM and my experience has been pretty good. I usually get around, you know, eight hours of screen on time. As you can see, six to eight hours is extremely decent on this device and standby times are pretty good as well. Overnight, I'm losing three to 4% battery. I know that's a little high, but with Wi-Fi on and with mobile data on and dual SIM cards, three to 4% drain overnight is pretty, pretty amazing. Now, even if we talk about the charging speeds, now the charging speeds have been pretty decent. As you can see here, 80 to 84 percent or let's see here what major charge have we done over here 42 percent and it took around 52 minutes right let's see if we have any more major charges where it was all the way down 43 percent 57 minutes so it does take about 1 hour 20 to 1 hour 30 minutes the charging speeds are a little slow but not the slowest as you can see 1 hour 40 minutes for 72 percent at times i was using slower chargers as well to get you know experience what exactly happens when you use a slower charger but all in all the battery estimates are pretty good the charging speeds are decent they are a little slow but not the you know slowest is what you can say but at the same time Time if we talk about performance numbers i told you gaming numbers were pretty good right but what about benchmarks a lot of people crave for benchmarks right now, as you can see we are opening n2 benchmark and uh, this is n2 v10 which will give you 728684 these are the individual scores the temperature did increase by seven degrees celsius and the battery dropped by four percent so that in my opinion is a little warmer than i expected it to be now talking about the cpu throttle test here as you can see 189 433 gips is the maximum score and the average score is 172 762 the cpu did throttle to 84 percent of its max performance so that's not the best but you know it's in the middle ground it's okay single code 974 and multi code 2707 so overall you know if you ask me as a custom rom compared to dubfest this is excellent it gives you some more customization now as far as performance is concerned i still feel dubfest takes the cake so all in all evolution x if you ask me it's a brilliant rom i did not notice any major bugs which would stop me or recommend you from using this rom as a daily driver let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video i'll see you in the next one keep smiling take care Goodbye.